Hello and welcome to another episode of Ass Kicking Athletes of Antiquity with me, Carl Smallwood from Fact Fiend, and today's the turn of Ulrich von Lichtenstein, the womanizing Dark Knight. If you're currently bringing up the Wikipedia page for A Knight's Tale, I'm going to save the trouble. Yes, Heath Ledger's character in that movie is called Ulrich von Lichtenstein, but we're not here to talk about him. We're here to talk about the guy he was based on. And oh, did you not know Ulrich von Lichtenstein was a real guy? Hold your tongue, sir, or lose it. Now you see that, I do believe. Sir Ulrich. Virtually nobody does, which is a shame, because just like his fictional counterpart, he was a champion jouster with a taste and with the most fine and demanding of women. My lady sends this message. She says that if you love her... Look, I know, I know, I must lose. Is she not watching, huh? She says that if you love her, you will not lose another match. She says that if you love her, you will win this tournament. Now, if you've seen the movie, which I hope you have, because it stars Jarvis from Iron Man, the Joker, and some guy from Firefly, you'll know that Ulrich von Lichtenstein is the fake name Ledger's character takes on so that he can pretend to be of noble birth and thus compete in the joust as a knight. Though within the context of the film, Ledger's name choice is oddly scoffed at and it is suggested that Ledger's character came up with it on the fly, it did actually belong to a real guy who kicked and ploughed through just as much, if not more ass, than Ledger's character did in the world of jousting. <laughs> The reason we don't know this for sure, though, is because most of what we now know about Ulrich's life is gleaned from a book that takes so many liberties with the truth, it's currently being sued for child support by it. A book I feel compelled to mention was written by Ulrich himself. <laughs> All of the information in today's video is based on his own autobiography. That is literally a joke in Duke Nukem, where Duke Nukem writes a book called Why I'm So Great. And I just want to talk about Duke Nukem for a second, because there's a game where he doesn't have a health bar, he has an ego bar, and health pickups are just his own autobiography that he reads and replenishes his ego. <laughs> anyway! Damn, I'm looking good. The book, which is, I shit you not folks at home, titled In the Service of Ladies, details Ulrich's life and his many, many victories in the sport of jousting and how he generally walked around Europe being a swaggering steel plated poon hound. And just for a second can we all appreciate the fact that when asked to pick the one fact from his life he wanted to emphasize in the title of his own autobiography, Ulrich chose his endless pursuit of supple maiden ass. Like his film twin, Ulrich competed in joust not just for honour and the excitement of pushing people off a horse with a big stick, but for the love of a woman. Again, just like the movie, she was not kind to him. It's like, you know, you remember that scene where Ledger has to prove his love by repeatedly being smashed in the face by spears being driven into his melon at Mach 3? He loves me. Oh. Well, Ulrich has a better story than that. I say this because when Ulrich lost the use of his finger after a particular nasty fall, he wrote to his special lady friends to tell her about it, which I'm going to assume counted as flirting back then. However, his new beau was not impressed and wrote a scathing letter back accusing him of either lying or exaggerating his wound. And Ulrich von Lichtenstein was not a man who took being accused of lying lightly, and he responded to this letter by cutting off his own finger and sending it to her. Because suck on that, Van Gogh! <laughs> does that? His own finger! And that's the thing as well, like, if it wasn't injured before, it definitely was after that. <laughs> uh, weirdly, Ulrich's potential paramour was not enamoured to the Lonely Knight by this act of self-mutilation, even though seriously, you just don't get commitment like that these days. The similarities between Ulrich von Lichtenstein and his film counterpart don't end there though, because after you know what, I'm going to call it the finger incident, just to be diplomatic. Ulrich promised his lady friend that he would win a tournament dedicated to Venus, the goddess of love, in her name. Which he did, while disguised as Venus herself, which just so happens to involve him wearing long flowing, stark white pimp robes and a wig. Because Ulrich von Lichtenstein knew the importance of being fabulous at all times, and I can't imagine what you'd feel like getting styled on that hard. Like when the guy who wins just rocks up, dressed like the person the tournament is dedicated to. Anyway, if that wasn't already impressive enough, you may recall, or just happen to know, that in jousting, breaking a lance against an opponent's face was considered especially difficult. The reasoning being that such blows normally glanced off such a small target. During that tournament alone, Ulrich landed a reported 307 lance headshots. 
in the process earning himself 271 rings. And as an aside, I'd like to talk about a fact conspicuously left out of a knight's tale about jousting, and that's that if you knock someone off their horse but didn't injure them, that person was allowed to try their luck at beating you in hand-to-hand -hand combat. For absolutely no other reason than one day a guy might decide to put it on an album cover. Ulrich is noted as being so hated at the tournaments he entered because of his habit of aiming for the neck and head, and his even more annoying habit of winning all the time, that it wasn't uncommon for knights to attack Ulrich three at a time whenever this situation arose. Are you kidding? It's five against one. It's three against one. How do you figure? However, considering that Ulrich was well versed in unarmed combat as well as the ancient martial art of pushing people off a horse with a stick, it's likely that every time this happened, unbroken noses became an alien concept to him. Similar to his film counterpart, Ulrich's lady friend still treated him like shit, despite his impressive spree of victory dedicated in her honour. And she invited him to her quarters but insisted that before she let him in, he wait outside her window dressed like a leper. Keen to impress his woman, or it did wait outside, all night, in the rain, while she slept soundly in her room. It's like, that's just rough, isn't it? It's like, come on, <laughs> that's a rough one. <laughs> he cut his finger off. <laughs> like a knight's tale, Ulrich's story does have a satisfying conclusion, because eventually, she did come round and they lived happily ever after. And just fair play to you, Ulrich. I don't understand women. Nor do I, but they understand us. So if you enjoyed this episode of Ask Kicking Athletes of Antiquity, um, let me know by leaving a comment and just subscribing to this new channel, which, as of recording this, doesn't have a name. We're currently just calling it Untitled Side Channel, and I'm really hoping that name sticks. Because <laughs> it was my suggestion, and it's so stupid. Anyway, I... Yeah, and oh, as an, an addendum, can I just mention the fact that A Knight's Tale is a super good movie? It's called Alas. Hello?